entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. It's got to be nice, Tag. It's not every day state senator passes through Diablo. And he's stopping at my hotel for the night, too. Well, how can he stop in any other hotel? You got the only one in town. Now, none of your wisecracks, young man. This may be the only hotel, but it's the best and cleanest in the whole West. Where's Annie and Lottie this morning? We saw them ride out just after sunup. Out on Sandstone Mesa. Annie's practicing some of her shooting tricks. She's been asked to put on a demonstration for Senator Halstead. Say, that's a real honor. You bet. She got a personal letter from the senator himself. Just asking if he could see some of her shooting. We've got to get that room fixed up, Helen, or we get shot. There's a lot of work to be done before the 5 o'clock stage arrives. like Diablo's planning a big reception for the senator. <laughs> yeah, don't it, though? Figure we can join the party, Luke? No harm in trying. Lofty. But I gotta keep on practicing. I don't see why. If I could shoot like that, I figure I had all the practice and I needed. If you figured that way, you wouldn't be shooting well very long. Stay. What's wrong, Tag? You rode in here like the devil himself was after you. Almost as bad, Lofty. It's Luke Dallas. Dallas? What about him? He and his boys just rolled right into town. Well, he's a professional gunman, isn't he, Lofty? One of the best. When he shows up, someone generally gets killed. Well, I've heard tell that he's got some pretty big men behind him. Yeah, but no one's been able to prove it. Well, let's just hope they're passing through, Diablo. No such luck, sis. He and his boys are still in there at the hotel. I saw him. What do you think? I don't know, Annie. He's faster than Grease Lightning with a gun. But you'll show him what's what, won't you, Lofty? As soon as you tell him, he'll clear right out of town. I'll do what I can, take. I know all about it, Are you going to take him? You going to take Luke Dallas?
Deputy's down there, Luke. All by himself. Well, we don't want the deputy to be lonesome. So let's go see what he wants. Mighty nice of you to welcome us, Deputy. Kind of out of your territory, aren't you, Luke? Well, I'm looking for a place to settle. Diablo might be just what I'm looking for. I don't think so. Diablo's a peaceful town. Oh, I ain't aiming to start no trouble here. So why don't you mosey on over to your office and take care of your job? Your being here is my job. I'm asking you to leave. Well, you can keep on asking, Deputy. Me and the boys here ain't gonna leave till we get good and ready. And if there's any dispute in that, we can settle it right here and now. And I'll let my gun do my serious talk. him inside out. He's a coward, that's what, a coward. He ain't fit to be a lawman. He ought to turn in his badge. Just like you said, Luke, we've got a setup. <laughs> yeah, there's not a thing to worry about, boys. Not a thing. that deserves an answer. You don't have to answer to us, Lofty. We've seen you in enough scrapes to know you're not a coward, but giving up your badge and your job... You're not afraid of Luke Dallas, are you? No. I'm not afraid of him. But you back down, Lofty. I saw you. Luke Dallas is no stranger to me, Tag. I've known him for years. We were in the cavalry together. He was in my platoon when I was stationed at Fort Stone. <laughs> It's as simple as that. I owe Luke Dallas my life. I understand how you feel, Lofty, but... Well, he's not the same man you knew in the Army. He's a killer now, a professional gunman. I know that, Annie. But how can I draw on a man who saved my life? I just don't figure that's the way to pay off my debt. And that's why I had to give up the badge. Gosh, Lofty, 
Why couldn't you tell that to the folks here in town? So as they won't think you're yellow. I could, Tag. But I don't think it would do much good. I think it was just an excuse. Do you think Dallas is serious about settling here in Diablo? No. No, I'm sure he wasn't. Gosh, Lofty, what do you think he's up to? I don't know. I know one thing, sure. He's in Diablo for a reason. Well, then don't you see, Lofty, you can't back down now. The whole town is depending on you to keep the peace. I'm sorry, Annie, but they're going to have to get somebody else. What time's the senator's stage due in? According to the schedule, 5 o'clock. His room will be right down the hall. What's the matter, Frank? You're not getting jumpy already. We just got here. You sure that deputy won't cause no trouble? You mean ex-deputy. You saw for yourself what happened. You see, he's kind of obligated to me. You reckon you feel the same way after you've killed Senator Halstead? By that time, we'll be well on our way. Nothing I hate more than waiting. All good things come to them that waits, Frank. The senator's a big man, Luke. Just about everybody in the country knows him. Yes, and everybody will be reading about him tomorrow. His obituary will make headlines. Maybe Frank's been reading too many of the senator's speeches. All about him, passing the Homestead Act and helping little people. Is that right, Frank? Is that what you want, a little piece of ground all to yourself? You know it ain't that, Luke. I'm not the settling down type. Well, you'd better settle down right now. Those Indian traders in the state capital are paying us plenty to see that Halstead never casts another vote. But how can one vote make any difference? Because, like you said, the senator's a big man. Without his support, that Homestead bill hasn't got a chance. And our friends can keep on trading without worrying about that land being open to the settlers. Now, why don't you two go outside, look the town over, enjoy yourselves. I want to get me some rest. I don't know how you can rest, Luke. You know what we got to do. I got to sleep, Frank, while I have the chance. What do you mean? I'm going to have a real busy night. Give me a gallon Dodge. It sure like some of that stuff. Costs enough. One dress looks the same as the next. <laughs> what goes into it, they cause, eh, Frank? Yeah. Speaking of women, look what's coming. Morning, little lady. I don't reckon you and me have met. Let's keep it that way. Oh, no, that's not a very nice way to talk to a stranger. I was just trying to be friendly. Say, I'll just bet you're that Annie Oakley people talk about. You're carrying a gun and all. You win the bet. Now, if you don't mind, I have things to do. <laughs> What's your hurry? You and me ain't got acquainted yet. You're not going to. Get out of her way. Well, if the ex-deputy ain't getting jealous. <laughs> I meant no offense, mister. Come on, Austin. Now, you wouldn't get all riled up at a little fella like me, would you, mister? Because if you would, I'd tremble something off. Guess you must feel real protected, huh, Miss Oakley? Having this big, brave cowpoke at your side. Lofty, please. Sure you don't want me to help you, Miss Lacey? I'm awful good at sweeping. No thanks, Tag. I'll manage all right. Kind of getting things spruced up, eh, miss? Now, you shouldn't go to all that trouble for me and my friends. <laughs> this is for someone else's benefit, Mr. Rand. Someone important. It just seems like nobody around here appreciates us. Don't it, Kirk? Ah, uh, this little lady ain't as ornery as she sounds, Frank. Why don't you two guys just go jump down a well? Who's a wise kid? My name's Tag Oakley, and I'm not afraid of you two. Well, now, that just about makes you braver than anybody else in town, don't it? Maybe they ought to make you sheriff. <laughs> Why don't you leave us alone? We're not doing you any harm. We're paying customers, guests of the hotel, miss. Well, you're not particularly wanted. Why don't you go away? Uh, it's downright unsociable. Let me go! Let me go! Let her go! Let me go! Let me go! I ain't used to having people say no to me, lady. Well, maybe that'll help you get used to it. I wish you hadn't have done that, miss. 
To knock. I'm going to forget a lot of things. Meaning what? I mean what's between you and me is personal. It doesn't include your two apes down there. You must have had a run-in with the boys. Oh, they're probably just having a little fun. But you and your kind call fun makes decent people sick. Now, I'm warning you. Tell them to lay off. That's pretty big talk for a man who ain't wearing a badge no more. That badge can go back on, Luke. If it does, I'll forget you ever saved my life. Still the same, huh? Duty comes first, just like when you were in the army. Any way you want to take it. I'll come gun and I swear. Oh, Craig, as long as you're passing out warnings, there's something I ought to tell you. I don't think you're fast enough, with or without a badge. What you think doesn't worry me a bit. Well, he's got this town darn near scared out of their wits. Ain't you got to do nothing? But, Dad... Now, quiet, Helen. I've got a right to speak my mind. Are we going to sit by and let a bunch of gunmen turn this town upside down? The senator's coming today. Suppose something happens. Nothing's going to happen, Mr. Mason. Well, who's going to stop him? There's no one around here as far as I can see. But, Dad, Lofty's not afraid. You saw that just now out front. Yes, but they were Luke Dallas. He's the one I'm concerned about. I'm sorry, Mr. Lacey. Well, being sorry, no comfort. What is it, Lofty? Why are you afraid of Luke Dallas? Gosh, sis, what are we gonna do? There's not another man in town that can stand up to Luke Dallas. I know, Tag. But who are we gonna get? We've gotta have law. We do have law, Tag. Lofty's fighting a battle within himself right now, but... Even without his badge, he knows his job. I'm sure when the right time comes, he'll prove it. Lofty? A message from the state capitol, from the chief federal marshal's office. It's Luke Dallas, Miss Annie. He and his boys are going to kill Senator Halstead. What? Holy Toledo! Listen to this. Political plot to assassinate state Senator Halstead and Diablo, uncovered here. 
Conspirators captured named Luke Dallas, Frank Reagan, and Kirk Rand as hired assassins. If possible, place above named trio under immediate arrest and hold on federal charge of conspiracy to commit murder. Proceed at your own discretion, but take all necessary precaution for the senator's safety. Well, we haven't much time. The stage is due in at five. Cars, what are you going to do, Lofty? I've been ordered to do, Tag. It's not a personal matter any longer. Do you think we can do it quietly? We can try, Annie. We can't do it quietly now, Annie. He's wearing the badge, Luke. Yeah, I noticed. Hurley, clear the streets. There's going to be some shooting. Yes, sir. Get clear, Tag. Annie, you! Shoot, Mr. Lacey. You better take cover. Hurry. It looks like you've got something on your mind, Deputy. You want something special? You, Luke, and your two boys. Your friends in the state capitol pull the rug out. You're all under arrest for conspiracy to commit murder. Like I said, Deputy, I let my gun do my talking. You'll have to let yours do the arresting. Better tell the little lady to get out of the way. Do like he says, Annie. It looks like I'm gonna get a chance to make up for that mistake of saving your life. Right now. You can start trying whenever you're ready. Clears off the dead, Luke. I could have shot to kill. I reckon we owe you an apology, Lofty. We're sure sorry. Forget it, Curly. I had it coming. How do you do, Senator? How do you do, sir? Uh, this is Annie Oakley, Senator. How are you? Oakley. Uh, she's going to show you some fancy shooting later on. Oh, wonderful. And uh, this is our Deputy Sheriff, Craig. Mr. Craig. My pleasure. And this is Tag Oakley, Senator. Tag, Hi. how are you? Just fine, sir. And my daughter. How do you do? And my name is George Lacey. Mr. Lacey. Welcome to Diablo, Senator Halstead. Well, thank you, Mr. Lacey. Thank you very much. Well, nice, quiet little town you have here. Yes, sir. A nice, quiet little town. Uh, yes. <coughs> Won't you step into the hotel for some refreshments, Senator? Why, right, thank you, sir. with her hard riding. Great shot.
shooting. And suspense. I've seen any woman ride before. I'll see her do it again at one of the fairs. What are you doing out here while she's practicing? I'm supposed to help her if she gets into trouble. I guess. Have you ever known your sister to get in any trouble she couldn't get out of all by herself? No. Say, where'd she ride to? Blue Ridge. She'll circle back in a couple of minutes. Down, Andrews. I'd march too much to talk. Come on. Whoa! Hand me the money bag. Get off the bench. You too, mister. Get out of there. This ain't a schedule stop, is it? According to my time, why? We don't stop till Diablo. The plans have been changed. Let's have your money. You gentlemen ain't planning on robbing us, are you? That's the idea. Supposing I just tell you I ain't gonna give you my money. Abner Hockey ain't afraid of you, no counts. Maybe this will change your mind. What's the trouble? Nothing I seem to say scares this guy. You road agents just keep your cotton-picking hands off of me, that's all. Tough guy, ain't you? How much cash are you carrying? The way I look at it, that's my business. I suppose I just take this as a souvenir. You give me that back. Now, that's mine. Yeah, no. Charles, are you shot, Lofty? Mm, I heard him. Stop your worry, Antag, and he's probably just practicing. Abner Harkey of Biloxi, Mississippi, at your service. Ma'am, I want to tell you what you just did was the most amazing thing I ever laid my eyes on. Well, thank you. I don't usually go around riding Roman style like that, but I was out practicing and I saw the outlaws spook the horses. Them no-count cotton pickers got my gold watch. I got to get it back. My daddy gave it to me, he did. Well, there's plenty of time for that later on. Right now, I think we better go back and pick up the horses and that driver and get this rig into town. Is there anything more I could do to help you up there, ma'am? <laughs> no, thank you. You better just ride inside. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm Ellen Hockey's brother. Yes, I, I figured that. Okay. Oh. That shot we heard, Lofty. And he could have gotten into trouble. Oh, Tank. Letting your imagination run away with you, I... Holy Toledo, Eddie. What happened? A 
robbery. Looked like the same bunch we've been after. Snuffed a runaway, too, saved my life. What's the matter, Lofty? Oh, he's just surprised because the runaway turned out to be horses instead of my imagination. <laughs> Say, are you a law officer? That's right. This is Ellen Harkey's brother, Abner, from Mississippi. Deputy Sheriff Lofty Craig and my little brother, Tag. How do you do? Hi. How do you do? Uh, no offense, Deputy, but where was you during all the excitement? Well, I... Uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Letting a little sprite of a gal like Miss Oakley run around catching the stages and all? Uh, just a minute, mister. Abner, Lofty is a very good lawman. It just so happened that I was there and he wasn't. Don't seem right somehow. Well, I reckon I better pitch right in and help catch them no-count outlaws. Say, were you a lawman back in Mississippi? Well, uh, no. No, not exactly. But I reckon whatever needs doing, I, I, I can do it once I set my mind to it. Are you folks from Mississippi so modest? No, sir, we're not. Why do you ask? Um, I think we'd better get on back to town. We'll uh, follow you in, honey. Right. There you go, Abner. Well, thank you, Tag. Much obliged. You're welcome. Now, let's see. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, first off, I think we ought to organize us a citizen's committee with me at the head, naturally. Then I... Wait a minute, Abner. I know you want to help, but Lofty can handle it, I assure you. Just what experience have you had tracking? Well, uh, me and Napoleon, we... That's my hound dog. Uh, me and Napoleon, you know, we, we used to go slashing through the swamp. Well, we used to we used to track most everything, you know, bear and possum, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. A nice thing about bear and possum. They can't shoot back. But outlaws can and do. Abner, this is a job for the law. Maybe after you're around here for a while and learn the area, you... My, my daddy always says there's no sense in putting off till tomorrow what you can do today. Well, Abner, if we need help, I'll sure call on you. But uh, for now, let us handle it, huh? Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I reckon it's all right with me. Look, Abner, Lofty is paid to do a job. And generally, when private citizens get into it, they just get things kind of all mixed up. Well, it uh, appears I'll have my hands full helping my sister Ellie anyways. You ever done any ranch work before? No, no, I never have. But, uh, well, I ain't gonna have no trouble with that roping and riding type stuff. It'll just come natural. Sure it will. <laughs> we'll ride out with you to Ellen's. Tag, you stay here. These saddles none too soft, do they? Stick with it, Edmund. Nothing you can't do once you set your mind to it. Well, it ain't exactly my mind I'm a setting on. I wonder what that deputy's doing out there. What's the matter, Andrews? Your conscience bother you? Relax. Maybe we ought to clear out of here and join Marsh at the Canyon Hideout. Look, we've got nothing to worry about. We're safe right here. And Marsh will take good care of the money. We'll get back to work before they think we're loafing. Abner. Well, I declare, Ellie, you're prettier than ever I remember. Hello, Abner. I've been expecting you. Well, you don't look none too happy about it. Smile, Ellie. Your brother's here to take care of you. I am glad to see you, Abner, but I've really been doing fine. Ask Annie and Lofty. Your sister's a very good rancher, Abner. I ain't denying it, but she has a man's work. I aim to take the load off on her pretty shoulders. But you've never done any ranch work, Abner. Well, no, but I aim to. Why, inside of two days, I'll have the rest of your cowpokes working overtime to keep up with me. If your brother works like he talks, Ellen, you won't need any other hands. Let's go over to the barn. My foreman can tell us more about what needs to be done. To the barn it is. We'd better oh, get on back to town. Wait a few minutes, Annie. I'd like to talk to you. All right, Ellen. We'll wait. <laughs> Coming this way. That kid's the one from the stagecoach. You just keep quiet. Let me do the talk. Come on, let's take this inside. Good afternoon, folks. Vic, I'd like you to meet my brother, Abner Harkey. Howdy. Abner's gonna be working with us, but he's new at this. You'll have to break him in. Well, that's fine, Miss Harkey. 
Anybody special you want him to start working? Well, I ain't afraid to tackle anything. You got to throw my way. Well, doggone. Where'd you learn to talk like that? Mississippi. Are you making fun of the way I talk? Nobody's making fun of you, Abner. I went through the same thing, too, when I first came here. You soon lose your accent. The Mississippi kid, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I kind of like it. Yeah, you boys can call me by that handle from now on. <laughs> I never did cotton much to Abner, did I, Ellie? Well, uh, where do I start? Well, might as well start right here, Mississippi. Clean up the barn. Shouldn't be too hard for a, a tenderfoot. I don't know as I like the way you said that, mister. It's kind of like you was being sarcastical. Well, you got me all wrong, kid. It's just that I am foreman here. I figure a man's got to start at the bottom if he's going to get anywhere in the world. You just don't give me no trouble, because when I'm foreman, I don't know as I'm going to be wanting your kind around. Abner, let's keep one thing clear. I still own this ranch. I know that, Ellie, but now, I know more about things like this. Now, you just leave it to me. Why, well, Vic's been my foreman for years, and as long as he's here, he gives the orders. Your brother's just blowing hot air, miss. Don't worry about it. Kids are like that. I'll take some of the fire out of them. Maybe you'd like to try it right now, cowboy. You better settle him down, miss. Wouldn't want to hurt him. Hurt me? You just take off that jacket and we'll find out who's going to get hurt. Abner, don't you be a fool. Now, you just clear out, Ellie. It's going to get rugged. Oh, I declare. Now, you just stay in the corner. Come on, boy. Let's fight. Hit me. You better stop him, Lofty. He doesn't stand a chance. Now, let him try, Annie. I'm not doing good. He's right, Annie. It's about time Abner learned he can't take on the whole world single-handed. You sure getting me in trouble with your sister, Mississippi. But I suppose we might as well get it over with. That's what I say. <laughs> that ain't nothing to it. Hey, you're a regular tiger, aren't you? I'm oh, sorry, Craig. I guess I lost my head for a second. Let me at that cotton picker. Easy, kid. Fight's over. I could have taken him. Yeah, sure you could. You're kind of young to end up in Boot Hill. No hard feelings, don't you? Go on back to work, Vic. I'll have a talk with Abner before I send him to you. And please, no more fights. Of course not, miss. Now, me and your brother are going to be real good friends. You drop around the bunkhouse after a while, Mississippi. I'll show you around, huh? Come on, Andrews. I reckon some people never learn. Say, you, uh, you pack a pretty good wall up yourself, Lofty. Thanks, Abner. But we won't always be around to get you out of all your scrapes. I advise you to slow down a little bit, boy. Ain't nobody gonna bother the Mississippi kid. You know, Abner, caution's a mighty important thing. Courage is fine, too, but you'd probably be a lot better off if you'd use some good old common sense. You got what it takes, Abner. Use your head and you'll make a good cowboy. Bunch of blasts for the kind words, deputy, but not being by nature a modest sort, I kind of had that figured out. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm gonna stir up lots of dust here about. Ellie, I'm gonna go put my things away. See you folks later. Was he always like this, Ellen? That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Annie. You see, Abner was sickly as a boy. He could never do the things most boys his age did. He developed a brash and cocky attitude to make up in words what he lacked in strength. Seems as good enough health now, Ellen. He is. And he doesn't realize his handicap won't keep him out of trouble anymore. He's forgotten the meaning of fear. Try not to worry about it, Ellen. We'll see that Abner doesn't get in any trouble. She means the Mississippi kid. <laughs> Say, uh, where's Annie and Lofty? They went out on a few errands. They'll be right back, though. Sure feels good to have a brand new shooting iron in my hand. <laughs> you ought to be pretty careful with that thing. No sense in worrying, boy. I've been handling these things a long time. 
better put away. You're just liable to... <laughs> You all right, Tech? I'm okay, Lofty. I'm sure sorry. I was just practicing with my new gun. Abner, a gun is a very dangerous weapon, and you should never draw unless there's a reason for it. Besides that, you had six shells in the cylinder, and you should always keep one chamber empty, the one the firing pin rests on. Well, I was just trying to do some fancy twirling. Oh, well, you mean like this? Oh, oh, oh that's fine. Yeah, let, let me try that. Uh, I don't think you better, Abner. Annie's been practicing for years, Abner. And as good as she is, she still uses caution. I see you're all ready for ranch work. Yes, sir. I'm gonna bust a couple of mavericks today, boy. <laughs> See, uh, tell me, how you coming on finding them no-count outlaws? Uh, not so good, I'm afraid. But these things take time. Yeah, I reckon so, yeah. I sure hope you find them, though, because they got a valuable watch of mine. And about $20,000 of this town's money, too. Yes, ma'am. Well, I tell you, if you run across anything, you let me know. I'll be glad to help you track them. Oh, we'll do that, Abner. I tell you, why don't you drop out to the ranch sometime and watch me work? Might be interesting. I'll bet it would. Boy, what a character. Do oh, you think anything will ever tame him, Annie? I don't know, Lofty. But if it does, I'm afraid he'll never live to meet it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't get it, Rick. I don't get it at all. Why we stay on here making peanuts when we get more than $20,000 waiting for us? Because we got a perfect setup right here. Roundup's coming. The stages will be loaded with cash. We're going to take most of that cash before we pull up. Oh, boy. What time's that stage to win today? Four o'clock. Got about three hours yet. Why, you cotton picker? That's my watch. Well, get a load of Mississippi, will you, Andrews? All decked out like a real cowboy. You look good, kid. Never mind that. How'd you get my watch? What you're talking about? This is my watch. Well, there ain't no chiming watch in creation sounds like that, and I had no it anywhere. You must be the stage robbers. Easy, Mississippi. It ain't smart accusing people of things like that. But you just give me it back, and I'm putting you under arrest. Look, kid, I bought this watch. That's right, kid. I was with him. He paid ten dollars for it. He did. You're lying. You made a mistake, Mississippi. Forget it. Only mistake I made is not whopping you good the other day when I had the chance. Well, I guess this settles it. Now we gotta pull out. Right up the canyon, hide out and get marsh. I don't need no help, sis. Oh. I ain't a little boy no more. Abner, it's not your job. Abner, listen to me. Please listen to me. Don't you worry, Ellie. The Mississippi kid can handle it. tried to warn him, Ellen. Did you see where he was headed? Toward the canyon area. You've just got to stop him, Annie. You've just got to. Tag, you stay here with Ellen. Oh,
got you, cotton pickers. Come on with your hands up. I got you surrounded. Now, I'm going to give you to the count of ten. Mississippi kid. One. Two. I always figured he was crazy. Now I know it. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Get out the back, set up a crossfire. Any closer? I wouldn't be talking now. Don't seem fair somehow, he's sneaking up toward me like that. Why, he could have shot me. A possum would never do that. I thought we told you not to tackle this yourself. You sure did, ma'am. I reckon you knew what you were talking about. A man could get mighty seriously hurt around you. You just stay put. Yes, ma'am. Annie, I'm going to try to get to the bar. OK, Lofty, I'll keep him busy. Well, I'm just about out of these things. We'll get back there, start reloading, and keep low. Let's do that. I just want to get my watch back. Still taking two. <laughs> I guess we're all still ticking, Abner, but for a minute there, I wasn't too sure. Oh, this is a fine watch. My daddy gave it to me, he did. Yes, sir, Ellie. That dinner kind of took me back to the old days in Biloxi. Oh, I tell you, daddy would be mighty proud of your cooking. He'd be mighty proud of you, too, Abner. I always knew you'd grow up to be a fine man. Took Annie and Lofty to show me the way, Lois says. Man never has to be ashamed to ask for help, Abner. Doggone right. Well, Mississippi, now that you're foreman around here, you've got quite a job cut out for you. Well, it won't be too hard with me running things. You see, there ain't a ranch foreman in the whole territory that can touch a candle to Abner Harkey uh, when he sets his mind. Yes, go on, Abner. Uh, what was the question again? About the job as foreman. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, but the most I can say is I'm going to do the best I can. I, oh, I got lots to learn, but I think I'm going to make it. I need help. Uh, now, you let that be a lesson to you there, boy. Don't you tackle nothing bigger than what you can handle by yourself. Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 